Services Industry Summit. We're here in Shanghai. Unfortunately, not everybody is able to get here. But what I wanted to do is give you a brief overview of what the people who can attend are going to see. What you see behind me is part of our exhibition area. We have a large number of partners who are with us uh, for this two-day event, demonstrating all kinds of solutions that are specific to the financial services industry. They're going to illustrate our uh, I-5 concept that you will learn about when you see the other parts of our presentations over these two days. So I thought I would highlight uh, a few of the major uh, things that people will see here, and we hope that you'll talk to your Huawei representatives and find out more uh, of the areas that interest you. One of the things that you will hear a lot is about mobile first as the way to go about engaging with your customers. You want to create an environment where they come through you for all of their lifestyle kinds of services. One thing that happens when you do that is that you're going to be collecting a huge amount of data, much more than you traditionally will store, and it also is not just around the kinds of financial transaction data that we're used to. You're going to keep uh, copies of their calls, the audio into, their, into your uh, call centers. You're going to have interactions with Internet of Things kinds of devices. You'll have video streaming. All of those kinds of things uh, take a huge amount of storage. So to be able to do that, Huawei has our new product. We call this the Ocean Store Pacific. Now the Ocean Store Pacific uh, comes in two models, and I'll show you the other one in a minute. This is our high storage uh, system. It can have 120 disks. Um, this actually, this is the 19 inch part, and that it mounts in a normal kind of a rack but you can have up to 123 and a half inch disks in this. So you can get about two, little over two petabytes of storage in a 5U enclosure. Very, very powerful, very good way to handle your long-term storage, particularly for things uh, like video. The other version of the Ocean Store Pacific is shown here. This one has a lot of flash storage. So this is a very high capacity flash storage um, and it is for the intermediate kinds of storage, particularly when you're going to be doing things like model training of the, the data that you have stored in your data lake. So both of these are a very powerful way to go about creating the kind of an, a storage environment that you're going to need going forward. So I just introduced you to the very high capacity storage, our Ocean Store Pacific. For traditional kinds of storage though, that's not really the right choice um, because it's not fast enough. It also doesn't have some of the features, while it has very, very high reliability and all sorts of capabilities to be able to survive uh, multiple disk failures and things like that, it's not really the right fit for traditional kinds of financial storage. For that, we have our Ocean Store Dorado. This is our all flash storage system. It has a lot of unique capabilities and we'll uh, demonstrate a couple of them. But one is that built into the Ocean Store Dorado is what we call Hypermetro. This allows you to have between two data centers uh, the connection that, with synchronization uh, so that if, even if you lose one data center, that you won't have lost any of the data or any of the processing capabilities because you're, you're running in an active, active situation. Now, for a third data center, like we have over here, this is where we would have our disaster recovery, okay? So one of the things that the people here uh, will be able to see, here we have actually uh, a lot of fiber. I think we have uh, probably about 300 kilometers of fiber that is connecting these two systems. And we're going to demonstrate the fact that you can turn off the, the compute, the servers, or where you can turn off the storage, um, and it will continue to operate normally. So this is a very high reliability system. The other thing that we're going to show is that also built into this is the disaster recovery for our third site. So one thing about moving to mobile is that you have to have 7x24. You can't take a system down. So you have 
typically two data centers that are synchronous and you're doing an active active if you will um, and then you have a third site that is some distance away um, in, in China, there's actually a, a rule by the regulator that that DR site has to be at least a thousand kilometers away. Now that's not uh, necessary in a lot of other countries. But the Ocean Store Dorado has built into it the capability to have the third DR site that is also connected. And so you're, and we, and we have special technology to be able to um, have uh, very high capacity at very low bandwidth capabilities for that disaster recovery system. There are a few other capabilities that the Ocean Store Dorado all flash storage system has that I'd like to highlight here. The first is that this was really the first system that used uh, what we call NOF, right? NVMe over fabric. So here we have a demonstration and if you could actually see uh, inside of here, we can show the different components, but it allows you to have um, the connection from your server to your storage be over a normal IP network. You don't need a special fiber channel network, so you can save a lot of money on that. And it's also very, very fast. And in fact, um, if you have routers like the Huawei ones in your data center, they actually are able to sense the data traffic that's coming for the storage and be able to prioritize it. Then you can get much higher speeds. We, we offer 100 megabits per second, no problem. In fact, you can go all the way up to, to 400 megabits per second, but I think that's probably, uh, nobody really needs that quite yet for storage. The other thing is from an architectural standpoint, what we're showing here, so these four controllers are in what we call an engine. And this engine uh, has eight controllers, uh, or four controllers in it. And here we have another four. You can actually go up to 32 controllers in a complete system. Uh, but at that size, you're really handling a huge number of, of operations per second because this is all flesh, right? But some of the capabilities that we have here are the ability, so let's just look at this. There's three characteristics. The first is what we call smart matrix. So this is, in these eight controllers, they're all interconnected and they're all interconnected to the storage devices. Uh, here we have a whole lot of, of uh, all flash storage um, and these are actually uh, what we call our palm size that you can actually get um, 32 in a 19 inch rack rather than the normal 24. Uh, but because all of these are interconnected, I can actually lose uh, seven of the uh, uh, different um, of these eight and not lose any uh, connectivity. So if I were running the, the uh, simulation here, seeing all of the videos here, I could actually turn off seven of these eight and not lose any uh, access to storage and any of the, th of the throughput. It's, it's really uh, an amazing system. The, ne the next thing to talk about is that, you know, I think Huawei was one of the first to use a software-defined RAID. Um, not a separate controller card, but software-defined. And we spread all of the, the, the storage across all of the disks. Um, and typically people use an algorithm like a RAID 5 or a RAID 6 and in that situation, you could lose up to two disks, um, but after that, you would actually lose real data. We have come up with a new algorithm called RAID TP, um, and here we actually have a demo that allows you to show that we can lose up to three of these disks. Um, and I can just uh, pick those three disks. You can see they all uh, were removed here. And this video that I've been streaming from storage uh, didn't change at all. So this is a very good demonstration of how that uh, tolerance for three disks. And the last thing is that even across uh, enclosures for the disks, and here we'll just uh, uh, illustrate that, we actually s um, distribute all of the storage across multiple enclosures. It's not just within a single disk enclosure. So even if you lose an, an entire enclosure for the disks, you won't lose any data.
So these are very powerful capabilities that only are available in Huawei's Ocean Store Dorado. In addition to physical hardware like the Dorado and Ocean Store systems that I just showed you, one thing that Huawei has which we're really uh, very excited about is our mobile money offering. This is a complete solution that allows banks or even telecommunications operators to be able to completely operate a mobile money system. So people with phones that have smartphones, that have cameras, can pay using QR codes. Um, and even phones that don't have the ability to run an application, like a smartphone, right? They're just the old uh, kind of a uh, flip phone or whatever, can also be integrated into this solution. We have deployed this around the world we, uh, in more than 20 countries. We have more than 300 million registered users across those uh, uh, services. And one of the key things about this mobile money platform is that you integrate a system of agents with it so people don't have to go to bank branches. They can go to their local, um, you know, whatever uh, agent that might have been set up and be able to put in money or take out money. Um, and of course, they can integrate with all of the different merchants. Um, so we can have, uh, in fact, um, more than 200 billion transactions that uh, are going, 200 billion US dollars worth of transactions. So these are just some of our uh, different customers. Um, I'll give you an example in, uh, in Kenya, um, which is we have a couple of systems in Kenya. Uh, this one is the, um, run by Safaricom, and it's called M-Pesa. And M-Pesa has really been uh, very much of uh, a driver of financial inclusion. So um, when M-Pesa was first started in 2016, there were only about 70% uh, of the country had any kind of a bank account. And now it's up over 85%. So this is really, uh, and it's because they didn't have to set up the, uh, all of the bank branches and things like that, they could do everything through their mobile devices. This has really revolutionized uh, the ability to be able to bring people who are unbanked into the banking system. The successful use of intelligence actually takes a number of different capabilities. I mentioned earlier that we have lots of different kinds of data other than just traditional transaction data. And so Huawei has a number of different tools to be able to deal with this. So the first is what we call our Fusion Insight uh, MRS, which is the, the uh, um, being able to map produce. So these are, is built on a, a Hadoop platform. Um, so this is how you take huge quantities of data and be able to distill them. Um, and one of the things that's very Im uh, impressive about our Ocean Store Pacific is that it can talk directly to the Hadoop system because it supports the file system uh, access that's called HDFS. So we have the MapReduce capabilities. Um, and then for the normal uh, kinds of structured data, traditionally you would have a standalone data warehouse. Well, Huawei has that integrated in. It uses what we call our GaussDB, uh, the data warehouse edition. And this is a uh, massively parallel database. It scales out and, it, and to huge quantities. And so no matter what size data you have, if it's structured kinds of data from a typical data warehouse, you'll be able to put it inside of this GaussDB. We also are working on a transaction database, uh, which is based on an open source project called OpenGauss. Um, and in the future, this will allow you to do very high-speed transactions of very large quantities of data, uh, particularly in a cloud computing kind of an environment. So, and we have a graph database that will allow you to find relationships. Um, this is particularly important for fraud pre pre prevention. It's also very useful for looking at social graphs to be able to help your marketing efforts. So this is a very uh, key thing and we have, this is a, a graphical tool to be able to build the relationships and be able to visualize them to get more information out of it. And now um, really the key and one we're really excited about, this is what we call our 
EI, our Enterprise Intelligence. And here we're actually giving a demonstration of how you can uh, very graphically, you don't have to have a bunch of data scientists, but you can actually, particularly with things that are graphical, um, like, like actual objects like these uh, donuts or pastries, you can actually be able to just take pictures of them and then the system can integrate those capabilities into uh, services. So this demonstration actually is from a real live uh, customer where they took pictures of all of the pastries and then they have a camera at checkout and the camera uh, images shows, figures out what pastries are being bought and automatically rings it up. So very much labor, labor savings. You automatically obviously connects into the inventory systems. So very, very uh, impressive capabilities. And you don't need data scientists. You can just really uh, create these kind of uh, visual models uh, very easily. So we've talked about storage. We've talked about the intelligence. But you have to have some way to get all those bits connected to each other. And of course, Huawei's history is all about networking. And for enterprises, we have very advanced networking across all of our areas, and the, uh, both wired and wireless. So within a data center, as an example, if you want to have uh, 400 gigabit ethernet connections um, for your core switch, we can do that. Or for branches, things like these standalone routers that are very compact, one of the things that is unique about Huawei's uh, um, networking products is that they all have a common operating system across all of them. So it's very easy to have just a single management platform. We call it our iMaster. Uh, and it is not only a management platform, but it also does software-defined networking. So you can separate the control plane from the, the routing plane and be able to do all kinds of advanced things, particularly when you're starting to integrate with software-defined networking for SD-WAN out to branches, that sort of thing. But one of the other things that we would really like to highlight is this is a, a Wi-Fi 6 access point. Um, there are a lot of unique capabilities about it. One, of course, is that it can be controlled completely by the iMaster system. Uh, but the other is it has about four times the throughput of other kinds of, of Wi-Fi 6 access points. It also can integrate capabilities like RFID readers, so you can do inventory control within a branch, as an example. Um, and because it's software defined, you can have things like have uh, offer your uh, customers uh, Wi-Fi access as they're waiting for services. Um, and from the same access point that you're using for connecting all of your internal uh, systems, and there's no risk at all of any kind of a connection between them. So lots of uh, unique capabilities. I mentioned the 400 gigabit ethernet. This is our uh, cloud engine. Uh, and this is um, one of the, the capabilities that we have. If we can't come around here to look at the front, you can see that within this cabinet, this is a very large uh, core data center uh, router. Um, and you can see this is uh, our latest uh, uh, card here. This has 48 ports of fiber for 400 gigabit ethernet. You can also have 48 of 100 gig. Um, this is a, a traditional uh, ethernet that has 36 for the 40 gigabit ethernet. We can also support 25 gig. Um, everything is fully redundant, load share, all of the, and everything is, is hot pluggable, et cetera. So this is very, very um, advanced systems to be used within a, a data center. Now, of course, most people don't have a data center this big, and so we have different kinds of configurations. This is a, a half rack um, system here. It takes all of the same line cards um, that the big system does. So again, uh, you can have the iMaster as the control for all of this and have different kinds of systems within the data center and be able to fully automate in fact, this integrates with Huawei's autonomous driving network concept of being able to essentially have the network run itself.